Welcome back. You're listening to Get Real, and I'm your host, Bob Callagher. Joining me in studio today, we have Jill McGowan of All American Title Services and Drake at Mass, and she's here to talk to us about short sale negotiation. Welcome to the show, Jill. Hi, thank you for having me. So why don't we get started by talking a little bit about uh, what short sale negotiation is? Well, short sale negotiation is where I step in and I help out the sellers and the listing agents mm-hmm. and facilitate the short sale for them. Okay. So that's basically when somebody owes more on a property than it's worth, you kind of step in and help the bank uh, accept whatever offers on the table? Exactly. Right. Okay. So yeah. I'll go in and I'll you know facilitate the deal, um, mm-hmm. collect the documents, walk everybody through the process from Mm -hmm. listing to closing. Excellent, excellent. Uh, What kind of customers are you working with? Who can be helped by by a short sale negotiator? So who can be helped are sellers experiencing hardship. Mm -hmm. Um, And what I mean by hardship is they have to be behind in their mortgage. Mm -hmm. Um, Different examples of hardship are, number one is divorce. Mm -hmm. Um, Another one would be unemployment. Mm -hmm. Um, someone who loses a job, gets a new job and doesn't make as much money. So curtailment of income, Mm -hmm. um, if they have a, a death of a spouse, um, Mm. if they have a lot of medical issues going on. So there's lots of different hardship reasons, but Mm -hmm. you 100% have to have some kind of hardship in order to qualify for a short sale. And you also have to be behind in your mortgage payments. And what if you have assets? So what if you have money in your checking and savings or 401k? Does that determine whether or not they're going to approve a short sale? So that's a really good question. Um, They cannot and will not touch any of your 401ks, any of your IRAs, any of your retirement accounts. Mm -hmm. But if you do have a large amount of money sitting in a savings account, Mm -hmm. um, they could ask for a cash contribution at the end. So they could review the short sale, um, review all of your financials and if they see this large sum of money, they might say, hey, we're going to ask you to contribute 20000 towards the deficit. Mm-hmm. Um, I've definitely seen that happen. So, yeah, it's it's a problem if you have a large sum of money sitting in, sitting in accounts. Right. But I'm guessing that the typical person that's going through a short sale doesn't have right. a lot of liquid assets. The, yes. They have right. little to no money. Right. Exactly. Well, that's interesting that you said there's so many different uh, ways to qualify for the hardship because I was assuming that basically – job loss would be the only one that would get you off the hook. But so there are a lot of other reasons. Oh, yeah, definitely. And okay. um, a lot of times, you know, they want to see proof of this, too. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, to do a short sale, you have to write a hardship letter. So it outlines everything that you're going through and the reason why um, you are in default. Mm-hmm. So that helps. So if you happen to buy a million dollar house that's only worth eight hundred thousand dollars now and you owe more than that on it, they're not going to give you a short sale just because you don't want to have to foot the bill at closing, correct? Exactly. You yeah. can't just sell a house because you want to downsize or or get a bigger house or, mm-hmm. you know, you're sick of the house. You yeah. have to have some kind of reason. Yeah. Um, Other than I just don't want to pay the shortage. Exactly. <laughs> gotcha. Right. Yes. Excellent. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> uh, so what has to happen during a process to get a short sale approved? So it is quite the process and it is a... It, it's a lengthy process. Mm-hmm. Um, so what has to happen is once an offer is received, everything gets submitted to the bank. And what I mean by everything is they want to see uh, pay stubs, bank statements, financial statements. They mm-hmm. want to see tax returns. Um, all banks usually have their own package that they want to have filled out. Um, they want to see an offer, proof of funds from the buyer. Um, so it's a big package that has to be submitted. And then what happens is once everything is submitted, it goes into the review review process. Mm -hmm. They review all the documents and the bank sends out somebody to get their own value of the property. Um, and then once that value comes in, everything's reviewed again. Every it's a constant review, review, Mm -hmm. review. Um, they see what the offer is, see what the value is that came in and decide if they, if they're going to qualify these sellers to do a short sale. Um, The process is all different timelines, depending Mm -hmm. on if you have one, two, three liens, credit card executions. Um, But I would say the average time it takes to get through this process is about 90 days or so. Mm -hmm. And then if they approve it, then you have an additional 30 to 45 days to close. Okay. Um, But it is a lot of paperwork, documents. It's a lot of calling the banks. It's it's a lot of updates. Um, it's a, it's it's 
it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what I'm here for, and I've been doing it for a long time. So I help walk everybody through this process and keep everybody updated and clear communication. So hopefully it goes smooth. Right. And just I wanted to call attention to one thing because uh, a lot of people might not realize this, but in order to get a short sale approved, you actually have to have an offer on the table, right? Exactly. Okay. So sometimes I'll submit documents before an offer is received. If I have met with a seller and I've collected all these things, um, I'll get the documents into the bank. So at least they're in, they're processed in their system, and all we're, we're waiting on is an offer. Mm -hmm. So that kind of like gets it ahead of time, a jump start ahead of time. Um, but yes, you do have to have an offer for sure in order to get the process going. Okay, oh, great. So we have a lot of realtors that, that tune into the show on the weekends. Uh, can you tell them how they can educate their sellers on other options besides just letting a property go to foreclosure? Yes. Um, so I think that there would be a whole lot more short sales on the market if, if the sellers were educated about it. And um, the first step to doing that is to let the realtors know. Mm -hmm. um, they're... There is another option besides foreclosure, and that's obviously short sale. Um, and short sale is a much better option than foreclosure. Um, with a short sale, these homeowners, you know, it won't take a big hit on their credit. Mm -hmm. um, they're able to buy a property a lot sooner than a foreclosure. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen where a seller can buy within two years after closing on their short sale. Um, I've actually had several people call me asking me for documents so they can buy their next home. Mm -hmm. So um, another benefit to doing a short sale over foreclosure is incentive programs. Um, a lot of banks offer homeowners incentives to do a short sale. They'll give them money at closing, $1,500, $3,000. Um, so there's definitely an incentive to doing a short sale over a foreclosure. Mm -hmm. um, another, another reason, too, a big one, I think, is just so you don't have the embarrassment um, of going through a foreclosure. you It's not in the paper. It looks like you're just selling your house as a regular sale. There's not going to be a live auction on your front lawn mm. with a foreclosure. Um, so there's a lot of benefits to doing a short sale over a foreclosure, I think. Okay. All right. And when an agent has a seller that may need some short sale help, how quickly can you get involved in the process? Or how quickly do you need to get involved in the process? I like to get involved right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So if they know that they're going to go to a home, um, a seller, and they're in a short, maybe a short sale situation, I will, you know, get on the phone and call those people right away. I will see what their situation is. Sometimes I'll go to the listing appointments um, mm -hmm. just to talk about it and to set their minds at ease because it is a very stressful situation for these homeowners. Mm -hmm. They're behind. They think they're losing their house. They think that there's no other way out. Um, so right, right in the beginning, I like to get involved. Mm -hmm. Um, it also, it just relieves them of a lot of stress that mm -hmm. to know that they have a realtor and myself as a short sale negotiator behind them and mm -hmm. walking them through every step of the way. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, as soon as possible, for sure. All right. And you said on average they're about 90 days to get them approved? Yeah. Yeah. Depending okay. on the situation in the bank, 90 days tops. I mean, okay. yeah. So it's gotten better than where it was because for a while it, it used to take quite a bit longer than that, didn't it? Right. So I started doing this back in 2005 mm -hmm. and that was a mess. It was a complete mess for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. And now I think these banks have their own loss mitigation departments, their own short sale departments. So, um the, the process is a lot more streamlined. Um, I mean, it still takes time for their review process, but yeah, it's definitely more streamlined and it's, you know exactly what these banks need and when, and mm -hmm. you, they all pretty much have the same process. So. Okay. All right. Good. Yeah. And then from the buyer's point of view, uh, cause normally you're dealing with the seller, but, uh, if you're going to buy a short sale property, obviously it's going to be a longer process. And a process that may not end in you getting the property, depending on whether or not it gets approved, correct? Correct. So, yeah, the buyer needs to definitely have some patience in mm -hmm. this. Um, and they they don't they can't have any time frames. Um, for example, they can't have a home sale contingency with their offer mm -hmm. because we don't know what's going to happen with the short sale. Um, I just went through one a couple months ago where... It took um, about 65 days to get this this home approved in the short sale. And in the meantime, the buyer already had buyers for their home. Mm -hmm. 
but those buyers walked because they weren't patient with the short sale process of the home that they were buying. Right. Um, so then I, I, we took all this time, took the house off the market, got it approved. And now all of a sudden the buyer lost their buyers. Mm-hmm. So back they couldn't to the, back to the drawing. Yeah. Board. They couldn't get new buyers and our short sale expired and we had to start from scratch. So yeah, the buyers need to have patience. They can't have any time frames, mm-hmm. and they need to understand upfront that this could take four, five, six months mm-hmm. until they can close on this property. Okay. All right. So what's the advantage to a buyer? I mean, I know f- three, four, five years ago, if you were buying a short sale property, the reason you waited was because you were getting a hell of a deal. A you were stealing the property, basically. Mm-hmm. Is that still happening? Unfortunately, not. Not mm-hmm. a lot of short sales are good deals. I mean, because what happens is these lenders, they send somebody out mm-hmm. to get a value of the property. So say Wells Fargo sends somebody out to the property and it gets valued at $250,000 from this BPO agent or this appraiser. Mm-hmm. They're going to want to see an offer at $250,000 or around that. Right. So, so they're mean, not selling them at a discount anymore because they don't need to, basically. Exactly. They okay. don't need to. And they will let it just continue on the foreclosure process mm-hmm. until they get an offer that they think is worth it. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, definitely. They're not very good deals. But So I, it's, it's not that it's a bad deal. It's just that you're not you're, saving a lot of money. You're not saving a lot, a lot of money. No, right. you're not. On the other hand, I guess one of the advantages could be is that um, where the the property on the market right now is selling almost immediately after it comes on and you're seeing bidding wars and everything else, I would assume that you're going to have less competition on a short sale because not everybody's willing to wait four to six months to, to close. Yeah, absolutely. That's a huge positive to a short sale because mm. not a lot of people do have the luxury of time. So if you have a buyer that does and they, they see a short sale that they like, they're probably not going to be going up against 10, 15 other offers. Mm-hmm. So that would that would definitely be a benefit for sure for a right. buyer. And then going back to the seller side again, uh, you know, we talked before we got going today that, you know, there are some sellers that think, you know, why bother going through the process? You know, I know so-and-so lived in their house for free for five years, so why am I going to be an idiot, move out and pay rent starting day one? I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm just going to wait it out. Uh, is it is that a safe bet right now that you're going to be able to stay in the house for years for free or has it changed? No, I, I don't think it's safe at all. I think that, so say you're in the start of the foreclosure process, you have no idea when they're going to set that auction date. And when that, once that date is set, it's set. Mm-hmm. So um, you could risk it, but it's a huge risk. Um, I also think that, you know, banks are moving quickly with that so they immediately get it to a foreclosure attorney and they start working on it so I've seen it where an auction once the process started it's it has a date within six months I've Mm -hmm. seen a year I've seen two years I really don't know the reason behind it Mm -hmm. um but it's it's a risk for sure to just sit on it right well I know that one of the reasons the banks were letting people stay there for years and I don't want to say as a rule, but in a lot of cases, it was because they didn't want a lot of vacant properties because then they'd have to pay to have the houses put back together if they were vandalized and everything else. Right, and maintained. and Right. Yeah. And they just had so many foreclosures to deal with, it made no sense to start more foreclosures they could never get to. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. Totally. So, so they let people stay in the house for free because somebody else was paying the utilities and mm-hmm. they didn't have to worry about the house being demolished. Now, there's... There's not as many foreclosures going on because the economy has improved. So they can actually get the houses on the market much quicker because they're less to deal with. Right, less and time. with prices coming up, there's no reason to leave them sitting out there. I mean, they can basically get all their money back right now or yeah. close to it. Yeah, it's true. So really what it comes down to is short sales are, are not going to work for everybody, right? I mean, if you're, if, if you're not underwater, I mean, that's the big thing. If you owe less on the house than it's worth, then nobody's going to approve a short sale because they're not going to discount the pr- the price of the home. Right. Yeah. You have yeah. to be upside down for sure. Okay. And you have to have some kind of hardship reason for sure. So yeah, it's not, it's not for everybody. Right. Right. So why don't we talk about, you know, kind of how this mess all started. You said you could back it. You could, you started in this in 2005, right? Yeah, I did. So the, you know, anybody that's involved in real estate in any way knows that there was a huge run up from like oh two to oh six mm-hmm. in prices. You know, everybody was everybody wanted in the real estate game. Everybody 
was doing those no doc loans or stated income, stated asset. They yeah, were crazy time. Buying, yeah, they were buying more than they could possibly ever afford, and they figured, yeah. hey, worst case, I end up selling the pro- the property when I can't afford it anymore, and I make a profit, and I go on and do it again. Right. Unfortunately, the musical chess stopped in 2006, <laughs> and a lot of people got stuck with properties. I mean, the value stuff. I mean, I remember 2006 was kind of the beginning of the end, but by 2008, I mean, it seemed like everything had ground to a halt. Prices were cratering. We had years worth of inventory on the market yes. and no buyers. Yeah. Uh, but that's just not the case anymore. I mean, it, it just kind yeah. of rebounded about four or five years ago. Well, it's kind of funny because a lot of the short sales that I've negotiated over the years, mm. they these properties were purchased in that 2003 to 2007 time frame. Right. I mean, even still today. So they bought at the top of the market. Top of the market, right. right. And, you know, they overextended themselves. They have these crazy mortgages. They have these... Um, the mortgages where the would, negative amortization. Right? Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, they call them option arms so that they wouldn't yes. have to say negative am. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, a lot of them are from that time still. Right. So, I mean, and I, I feel that there is always going to be hardship. There's always going to be mm-hmm. sellers that are facing financial difficulties. So um, I get the question asked a lot. Oh, are short sales still around? Yeah, absolutely. They're still around. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think they'll always be around, maybe not as much as they were before, but people are always going to be experiencing these things. Mm-hmm. And if agents and sellers were more educated about the short sale and the short sale process and mm-hmm. how it can really benefit them, there'd be a whole lot more. That's right. for sure. Right. So for anybody listening right now, how can they reach you if they have clients or if they are a potential client mm-hmm. that could use your services? Yeah, absolutely. Just give me a call at 978 978- Four five two zero zero five zero. Um, anytime I check my voicemails, I'm I'm in the office a lot. So yeah, that's probably the best way. Excellent. And this has been Jill McGowan with All American Title Services in Drake at Mass, and she specializes in short sale negotiations. So give her a call. Thanks for joining us on the show today, Jill. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. We're gonna take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with more Get Real after this.